this handsome Leia Denle. <laughs> The beautiful Mar Marita van der Fiver. I am so proud that I was able to roughly get it right. And the one and only on Jackie. I'm so glad and blessed that you're all here today. What we'd like to know, what do you like to read? What are the books where you would say, wow, this inspired me. This is a must read. This is a book that I recommend to everyone. Okay, and Ducky says, hello everyone, and Ducky says, and Jackie says, I must start. Um, yes, I, it would be nice to start with a book that's here, so everybody could rush out and hopefully buy it, if you don't. Um, because, of course, we'd like you to buy our books too, all of us. Um, but there are also other writers who can't be here um, that we'd like you to know about. And one of the books that I have just noticed there, and that I've read a while ago, but stuck with me, was Bernadine Everestu. Um, uh, she's won the Man Booker Prize with Woman, Girl, Other. And I have known her for about, or her work for about 15 years because we were together at a writer's festival in 2006 in my birth country, South Africa, time of the writer festival in KwaZulu-Natal. And that's the wonderful thing about festivals like this. You meet writers whose work you don't necessarily knew before, and from then on, you follow them. So I have been cheering um, Bernadine from behind the scenes, and I am incredibly happy that she's now really um, the well-known and won this major international prize. I would... There are other books also, I think there's um, Blonde Roots, there, there are more than one of her books. So if you don't know her yet, I would say that's one, that's a good read. Thank you so much. And um, yes, I've read this book and I love it too. <laughs> good. So who is next, who would like to share? Hi, good afternoon again. Um, I was, I am going to talk a little bit about this book of Remy Ngamiji. Remy is a very, <laughs> very young writer. And I'm laughing because when sometimes we say he's a young writer, he can be 62, 48, but Remy is really, really, he's like a baby. How old is Remy now? Like 24, maybe less, or about something like that, yeah. So this is a, a writer from Namibia. Also his book is available here. It's called The Eternal Audience of One. I have not finished it, I must confess. But the thing is, sometimes we look for a book because of its you know, um, content, story, etc. Uh, I happen to know better the author right now than the book. And it's amazing and it's very, for me, I'm very proud to see a young, such a young uh, writer from Namibia who has the ability, the creativity, but also the way he analyzes the present and the future of our continent, Africa. So this is the book, I I'm just read one paragraph, can I? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Just, thank you. It's just beautiful. Beginnings are tricky because there are no countdowns to the start of a start. There is nobody to point out that this moment right here is where it all begins. Life starts in the middle and leaves people trying to piece the plot together as they go along, the only certainty is this. Everything that is not the end must be the start of something else. So not only the book, but it's, it's his perspective and really amazes me uh, how he sees the world. He's a very, very interesting young man. I feel, I feel very old by saying this, but I'm very proud of him. I am sure the audience wonders, what is he talking about, very young? How old is he? <laughs> yes, so, yes, Max. <laughs> and you? Yes, um, so apart from books here, th there's one book here that I have to talk about. It's very beautifully written, um, like all of them. Um, Silence is my mother tongue uh, by Adonia uh, Suleiman, uh, who looks like Adonis. And he writes as beautifully as he looks. And um, the book is right there. And there's also uh, everything by Abubakar. You know, Season of Crimson Blossoms is just, it's 
the best form of literary fiction, you know. You're not bored with countless pages of some character who's too engrossed with their own internal struggles. It's not flowery language for the sake of flowery language. It's beautiful prose that moves the story along. And it's just beautiful. And it's right there as well. There are authors who are not here whose books should be read. Um, I'm going to play off and go off to Mexico, for one. Um, the Transmigration of Bodies. I don't know why this book has not won every possible award. It's by Yuri Herrera. It's, um, well, it wouldn't even be giving it away if I say it's a modern take on Romeo and Juliet in a pandemic. But it was written long before the pandemic. And this is a book that is like, a, it's a, supposed to be a crime thriller, but it reads so beautifully that you cannot put this book into any genre. It's just beautiful from beginning to the end. There's also, um, well, I'm a crime right? Ah, The Transmigration of Bodies by Yuri Herrera. Uh, is it pronounced Yuri? Y-U-R-I? Yuri? Yuri Herrera. Cool. Yeah, you can thank me later after you've read it. <laughs> Changes your life. Um, I'm a crime writer, so I have to do some big up for my crime writer fans. Uh, sorry, What friends. crimes do you write? The ones I've committed. <laughs> <laughs> is it available? It is available. Uh, but I want to talk about Femi Kayode. Femi Kayode did an MA in um, creative writing and then came out with this book that won an award for the best manuscript you know, uh, while doing his course. And then I read it. He sent me a very early version of it. And the early version just blew my mind. And then when the book came out, you know, they sent me the proofs so that I could write a blob. I'd already read it, but I thought, let me read it again. And I read it again. I enjoyed it even more. And now I'm waiting for sufficient time to pass, so I've started to forget some of the plot, so I can read it again and enjoy it again. It's, um, it's called Light Seekers, People Seeking Light. And it's about, uh, it's about a very real, very brutal topic in Nigeria. It took, it took something that happened where three kids were lynched. And he turned that, he, he kind of examined that tragedy. This is also a guy who's, the, the writer is also a professor of criminal psychology. So he wrote this book about this very terrible crime, but from the point of view of, uh, of um, a criminal psychologist, because he had his lead character who was, you know, like him, a criminal psychologist. And it's an amazing book, uh, Light Seekers. Another one is only called Braithwaite's amazing, amazing book, My, Seri My Sister the Serial Killer. They're not here, but those are great crime books that I think people should learn about. Thank you. That sounds indeed very interesting. I am sure um, people would love to hear more about what they just said, and I'll make sure that at the end I will have everyone repeat their recommendations so that in case you, could, you weren't able to take notes or something like this, I might even um, suggest that you follow uh, African Book Festival. There might be some <laughs> tips as well, and then we can have this uh, recommendation, and you can run and order it at your local bookshop, for instance, online or physically, all as possible. <laughs> yes. So what I'm interested to know is how do you choose your books? Do you, some people go into a shop, if they are open, of course, and they see this beautiful cover and say, ah, oh, wow, this is so nice. Let me see what it's about. And then, hmm, why not? Or I have a friend who lets other people choose a book for her because that way you ensure you get a book that you yourself might not particularly choose and then end up having these beautiful experiences. Do you, you as a writer, how does it happen? No, all of you, all of you, how does it happen? Do you have such an encounters as well where you just randomly, ah, just a book? I, I think the books, um, they come to us in different ways you know it's like a labyrinth um so i had a friend uh, from from cape verde an author who used to tell me worry not the books will find you and i said oh you mean that you know i'll go to no no not you the book will find you you know like he believes in that that the book certain books will come to you like certain uh, 
loves, like certain paths and, and things you do. So it, I think it's different processes. Somebody who tells you, like, I can tell you, please read this and that. And some, it, it's another process, it's very beautiful when you're reading an author or the, the author or the book or the genre will take you, for example, when I read long time ago, um, Sartre, then you end up reading Beckett, then you end up reading Ionescu, then you end up going that way, for example. If you read Saramago, you will end up going another way or not. You can stop it. And that is very beautiful, you know, in a very... I think also the labyrinth of books is very personal. I mean, I can drop you a name or a title or explain you why, but I think in the end, you will have your own labyrinth and the way you get there. Can I drop just one more name? I totally forgot. There is this author, a female author from, from Angola. She's called Paula Tavares, and she's published here in a bilingual version, I think by this same publisher, TFM. It's a tiny publisher. And this author, I'm so sorry I have to speak like that about her, although she's Angolan, she is amazing. She's very delicate, very beautiful. Uh, she's a beautiful person, but her poetry, I'm talking about the poetry now. And I do recommend Paula Tavares, if you find that name. And it's, she's not that much translated, but I think she's translated into, into German. Yes, I agree with Undelki um, that uh, uh, writers, authors that you start reading lead you to other books because you start admiring them and you read more, want to read more of their books and, and other books. I trust... Um, word of mouth of friends that I, whose taste I share more than literary reviews, for instance. You know some people, you might not even know them very well, but you find out that you have the same kind of taste, that you enjoy the same books. Um, a, and a book I want to mention that's not here today, but that would definitely be an intercontinental bookshop, which if you live in Berlin, I hope you all visit at some stage because they have a wonderful selection, is... Um, uh, a French writer, French Senegalese um, origin, David Diop, who has just won the um, International Man Booker Prize for the translation of his of the, the novel um, Frère Dame. Um, the English title is At Night All Blood is Black. And it is an absolutely short the, the, uh, um, story about the Second World War, about a soldier from Senegal and his best friend dying in his arms and begging him to kill him, but he can't, and he goes crazy. And it's like a fable, it's a, a, a book that just gets you. Um, I mm, have, have very strong anti-war sentiments, and this book is, you just see what war, this is about the First World War and people going from Africa um, fighting this war in the trenches and and just his how he he writes it as if he's telling it to to his best friend he's he's mon plus mon plus de frère he's 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 like his soul brother the French title is soul brother David Diop I would say to anybody yeah um, how do I choose books so the good thing about becoming a writer is that you get sent a lot of books. You know, uh, you come home and there's another package and there's three books. And sometimes someone says to you, I'm going to send you a package. And they mean a package. You know, you get a box <laughs> of books for free. It's brilliant. And they expect you to write blurbs or to say something about the books. And you get to read people you would never normally read. Luckily for me, they keep sending me books uh, from the genre I write in, crime fiction which is how I discovered a writer, I would, I would well, it'll, I think he's going to win many awards. His, uh, his name is Tariq, and he wrote this amazing, amazing book out in the back, what is in the back of America uh, called Welcome to Cooper. It's not yet out, but damn, it's, this book was amazing. Well, so I guess send books. Luckily, I don't need to buy books too often anymore. But the way I used to choose books is interesting, right? Pre-pandemic. You know, you're not supposed to choose a book by the cover. I do that all the time. And I, I discover amazing books. I walk into, so on my way from work, in, I, walk, I walk in the city, uh, not the city, but anyway, on my way home from work, 
uh, in the city, you're waiting for your train, Liverpool Street Station. I walk into WH Smith and I look at the uh, new books um, column where they have the new books. I look at the covers. If the cover looks good, I pick it up and I read the first line. If the first line hooks me, I go on to the first sentence and then the first chapter, sorry, the first paragraph. And usually from that first paragraph, I know if I'm going to buy it, but it's usually the cover. And this is how I discovered the white tiger. Uh -huh. So this, this system works. <laughs> Um, the White Tiger, I knew I had to buy it because I started reading it. Read, you know how it opens with that letter? Yeah. And I couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah. And I was really late for my train. But it's that kind of book that just grabs you. And it hadn't even won the Booker Prize then. Was that the cover with an orange, very bright orange tiger? Or yeah, the, tiger the first edition with a tiger yes. in the middle. You see <laughs> yes, that cover. I remember that. This is why a lot of us, you know, we fight our publishers when they show us the cover. We're like, no. And unfortunately, we don't always have the veto right to, to we, say no. We the bigger publishers, no. Unless you are um, Chimamanda, <laughs> who's a goddess, who you should read. Everybody reads to read Chimamanda and Gozia Adichie. If nothing, read We Must All Be Feminists. Please. Yes. And gift it to people that need it in their lives. We all know some people that need that in their lives. Just give it to them. Yes. Um, I recommend Chimamanda as well. I love her. I want to be like her when I grow up, actually. It's too late. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we are finished here. <laughs> he doesn't speak anymore. No, but um, yes, unfortunately, I do it in the same way as he does. I also, I choose books the way I choose my clothes. If I like the color, if I look to look, then I pick it up, then I see. But then what I do, I read the back side rather. And I read what? You do the last page, you do the oh, first no, page. The spoiler. <laughs> no, it's not a spoiler. It's very beautiful. When you read the la you don't know nothing about the book and go and read the last chapter or the last page. Do it. Then forget it or try to forget it. Then read the book. Once you get there, it's another version. It's amazing. But yes, with crime it's like fiction. Smoking the same weed twice. No, no with crime <laughs> fiction. You can't do it with these yes. books. That's why, because I'm a crime writer, I never read the back. I don't want any hints. Because then I'm reading it and I'm guessing, no, oh, okay, I see what you're doing there. And it becomes boring. You don't see, you can't see by reading it without reading the previous chapters. You With literary it. fiction, yeah. You yes. can read any yes. part of the book yes. and you've still not missed anything because you guys just write about thoughts and stuff. <laughs> oh, you, write, you, guys, you guys. We you need guys to write, we need to, to plot. <laughs> Writing a crime story, right, is, is science. There's no word that is wasted. Everything has to, there's internal consistency. Anyway, I'm not trying to sell crime fiction. Yeah, I was wondering. Let's not discuss Except consistency, for your own. please. <laughs> what books would you recommend? Pers um, personally, Harry Potter, <laughs> one to eight. <laughs> no, I am. That was just a joke. <laughs> Even myself, I prepared myself so that I can. Um, I would recommend this book, Dreams and Assorted Nightmares. Yes. Um, this was the young gentleman that I interviewed yesterday, but I loved reading this book so much. So not only, um, yeah, I have it like this, so I bought it again. It's, you know, Christmas is coming, presents. It's always nice to, to give a nice gift. So I bought it a second time, and then one, then you can sign it, tell me nice things. But this is a very beautiful book that I would recommend. And the author is? Oh, yes, that's the most important thing. <laughs> Abubakar Adam Ibrahim. Yes. Then what I would recommend as well, or let's say I bought this book. It is basically it is of women and frogs, but there is an actual original title that is coming, The Teller's Secret from BC a Japan. And she's such a lovely woman. Shout out, BC, are you there somewhere? Anyway, shout out to her. You will <laughs> see her later and you will absolutely love her. She's the type of person, it doesn't matter what she wrote. You just feel like, oh, you've written something? I'll read it, regardless, even if it's just on a t-shirt. So look out for her, definitely. You can pre-order it. And someone said intercontinental if you live here in Berlin. Well, if you do not, 
you can order online from Intercontinental. So please don't shy away. Don't let boundaries like cities stop you. The internet can help. I think Leia has a question for you. Who has no, a question? No, 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 I don't have a question. I thought you wanted to say something silly. No, <laughs> no um, okay. Another, seeing as I, my birth country is South Africa, I just want to um, propose a Southern African writer, um, The Theory of Flight and History of Man, by Sepiwe Ndluwa. Um, it's it's a, um, especially um, the theory of flight um, blew my mind because it is um, it's set in an unnamed country, um, southern African country, which you can vaguely guess is sort of Zimbabwe-ish, <laughs> um, uh, and it has it, there's a lot of magic realism in it. I don't know if I should call it magic realism, but you have to, because that's a tired phrase in a way one immediately think of South America. And so it's not really that. It's just that there's magic happening in the book. Um, and it, it starts out being very realist um, fiction, and it's about a political system and uh, childhood memories. And so, and then in the end, there's a, there's a magic egg. And so... I can't give away that, but that's the kind of book I think you can read the last page to see the style of writing. It doesn't give anything away. It's beautifully written, um, but a strong storyline with a lot of magic. Can I recommend another book? No. I have a last question for all of you. Are you, are you a speed reader or slow reader or quick reader, on Jackie? Um, more and more slow. Um, I'm reading more, uh, very hard for me to finish uh, the uh, fiction. I'm reading lots of poetry lately, but this is, you know, just depends. Maybe the next 10 years will be different. Marita, what about you? Um, it depends on how, um, some books you read, and I don't want to, I don't mean it any, in, to say crime fiction, I read after the storyline, so you need to get the next chapter. He was just saying to me, we should mention Dion Mayer um, because he's a South African crime writer that I know and that, um, that Leo also knows. If you read Dion Mayer, you read a bit, you read for the story. You, yeah. uh, but it does not mean it's not very, very well written. But there are other books that are more literary that I read as slow as possible. And in fact, the closer I get to the ending, the slower because you don't want it to end. You want to stretch it out. And I think we've all known books like that. Um, how do I read? I read very, very slowly, not intentionally, but because I'm dyslexic. So it takes me twice as long to read a book as anybody else, sometimes longer. Uh, I had to learn to read in, in a different way and stuff like that. So it's still, and I'm a writer and I can't spell, but thank God for editors. Going back to Dion Mayer, it, it's more than that we know him. Dion Mayer is one of the most prolific crime writers of our time is South African, is massive in Italy, is beyond massive in France. Oh. And if you pick up any of his books, you'll be discovering someone who is at par with the Lee Charles and the Grishams and everything. It's just, he's a brilliant writer. And some, a French journalist uh, recently wrote that if you want to understand South Africa today, you can, if you read one Dion Mayer crime novel, you understand more than reading all what's going on in the newspapers and, and academic treatises and so, because he really gives you a t for the whole society. Wow. Thank you. I can just say thank you, thank you for sharing all these insights, even the hacks of reading the last page, looking at a nice cover so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for being there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>